Welcome back to the Ghost Key. I am Gray, and today we have yet another finished first division match for you. Little second to last one against Yippo here. I'm pretty sure we'll lose these last two, but eh, it is what it is. Um, I did go through the regen date, and there were a couple of um, interesting players. Right now, though, I'm not really going to get into all that, um, mostly because I'm kind of just, um, I'm kind of a uh, just really pricing them right now but i'll let you know obviously if anything comes to fruition um or anything like that so um that's pretty much pretty much it um yeah um there may be some players i'm kind of just figuring out let's figure this out first actually let me let me kind of concentrate and get our lineup kind of together here um we have Harala. Okay, yeah, I guess that's fine. Um, Michaela. Oh, right, yeah, I think we're. I think we're good. I think. I kind of want to bring Nermela, but his condition's a little low right now, so probably be best to just let him, you know, sit this one out and just call it good. Um, and just go with Ose and Oyala in the middle. And with Murato Nal up top, that's fine. That's that's fine, I suppose. And then Remasaho, if he gets like that yellow card, no one really gives a shit. Because, you know, we got Gron Holmes still sitting on the bench. But anyhow, that, oops, that's about, that's about it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do this. By which I mean, let's go ahead and jump right into it and lose. And then I'll get to talking about, um, um, some thoughts that I have about, uh, you know, where we're going to go, uh, staff-wise and whatnot. Um, I did, uh, go and hire a director of football. Apparently we didn't have one. Um, so I went ahead and hired one real quick. Just really, he's just someone there to fill the position. Really. Um, yeah, let's tell them to go out there and impress me. Not that they will. But anyhow, um, yeah, uh, I'm thinking about maybe because I was actually looking at the, the value, the price value of some of our players. It might go up actually when we get, when we officially get to the next level. But um, I have been looking at kind of um, thinking about selling a few players, um, mostly Morocco now. He's valued at about 10,000 euros right about now, and that's not terrible. Um, it's not great. I mean, it's just, it, like I said, it's just something. I mean, if we can get, you know, have like a transfer budget of like 5,000 or something like that, that'd be all right. I think that'd help us out quite a bit. They give us a little bit of wiggle room. I did find, like I said, some players, I found about four or five of them. That are pretty local that I'm gonna take a look at and price just so that just to see if I can you know if I can scrounge up some sort of transfer um, stash that I can kind of um, then try and do something with it and see if you know like I said bring a few players in um, but that's really about it like I said Murado Nall I think is on his way out if if we can um, that's something I do personally need to work on I'm not I haven't been very good on this game on FM12 I was pretty decent at it but on this one, I have not been very good at um, turning a profit on my players. Um, you know, it's just it's just been kind of tough for me to sell at the right time. Like I said, sometimes like there'll be interest in a player, and there'll be interest. And this is one thing like like I mentioned in the last video, um, it's been pissing me off. They'll they'll be interested in a player. They'll be like, hey, we'll pay. You know. 2.5 million and you're like all right let's up that to about you know three let's see if i can get a little bit more out of it you know three 3.5 you know so you'll so you'll suggest you know what you're supposed to do when you go into contract negotiate or transfer negotiations like okay you want you're gonna bid 2.5 i'm gonna ask for, for five even and then the idea obviously is to meet somewhere in the middle you want a little bit more than 2.5 then just as normal value you know just this normal market value you want a little bit more than that, typically, especially if he's a player that's that's not on your transfer list. You know, you're gonna go and take a look at that and kind of see if you can wiggle a little bit more money at him. Most often in this game, they just flat out. What the fuck was Hinkle doing right there? Thanks, Alusu, for saving us there, but Hinkle just fucking running off the wrong direction. You know, um, most often they'll just flat out, you know, decline, and then they'll come back like before the day's even done and bid again at 2.5 then you'll suggest 5 million again and they'll just flat out withdraw from negotiations again 
So that's one of the areas that really irritates me at this game. Like I said, the computer, when they're bidding for your players, they really don't. They really don't um, negotiate very often. I've had some instances where I was able to really negotiate well. Um, mostly with my Viking club. I did a really good job of selling some players that were there when I first got there for really good profits and then obviously turning that into my transfer stash for players that I wanted. So um, that's really going to be something that I'm going to try hard at this this uh, season. Um, one thing I have noticed is like a, a lot of selling players in this game is timing. Because um, there'll be, like I said, interest. And some teams will bid more than a player is worth and kind of really try hard to go after him and get him. And then if nothing works out, and then a year later you want to move him and you're done with him, whatever. You know, it, it's... It, they, there, there will be no bids for him at all. Like, at all. No one will be interested at all. It's really irritating because, I mean, especially when they come to you with, you know, like I said, a 2.5 million bid and not a penny more. And you want more for a player that obviously is a part of your first team, a player that's important to you. Oh, nice. So Lucy got a little bit lucky there. But, um, you know, like I said, it's that's something that I you know, have a huge, huge problem doing is we'll, we'll be stuck in that, you know, situation where we want to sell a player that's useful to us for more than what his market value is and no one will be willing to um, to pay that. And then like I said, when we're ready, when we're ready to par with him, when we're, when we're stocked up out of position or, you know, we, we're not that interested in, in renewing his, his contract in a couple of years, and we want to try and move him, no one will be interested at all. It's like the game knows. It's like it telepathically gets in my head and knows that, hey, you don't want that player anymore? Well, tough shit. You're going to have to hold on to him because I don't want him either. But anyhow, that is uh, that is what it is. So, like I said, I'll I'll try here. and Oh, nice. I'm going to stop him with a shot. And a goal. Wonderful stuff. We haven't been controlling this, this first half for the uh, The shot count is something I'm pretty happy with. I mean, I'm okay with, you know, I think I've said this before, I'm okay with not having a ton of shots. I mean, like I said, I, I've, I've accepted that with the formation that we're using now. It's just, um, I, I just, I just don't want to obviously, you know, surrender a ton of shots and a ton of scoring opportunities. Like I said, if we've only got four shots, but Yippo has absolutely none, I'm like, yeah, all right, fine. I, mean, I, I guess I'll take that over nothing. You know what I mean? Even if this were to end in a bore zero zero draw and we just don't convert our chances, as long as we don't give them any opportunities. You know, I'm, I'm fine with that. We might actually get out of this match with what new cards. And forbid, right? But anyway. So, um, like I said, I mean there's I, I was actually going through uh I was looking at whose contract here is up in a few months and uh, it's kinda funny. Basically, all of our players that are um, old and old defenders, their contracts are up. So I'm really stuck in a quandary, and I may have to take a gigantic risk and let some of them go because some of them are on kind of high-paying contracts. Um, and if I want to bring in players, I mean, I'm gonna have to dump some of those higher-paying contracts and just and just go with it. So. Um, like I said, it's it's kind of um, it's kind of going to be tough. Like I said, I'm going to have to take a bit of a risk because if I do, I think Reisenden is one of them, um, and then you have Heitenen as well. I think both of those, I think both of their contracts are up. And like I said they're older defenders, and you know, I mean they're they're bodies. But if we're going to keep them, we're going to keep them for a price that I don't want extra bench players for. Now the problem is they may be the best players that I can get at that position. So, yeah. I mean, so I either take the risk, let them go, and um, hope hope that we can get defenders that are better um, out of free agency, basically. And, you know, I... Uh, and, and hope we get better players out of free agency or just kind of go and, and bite the bullet and re-sign them. But the problem is if we re-sign them, then that pretty much locks away all of our money and all of our flexibility. 
in terms of our our payroll so yeah it's kind of a it's kind of a catch-22 and that's something too like older players tend to come at a higher price you know they they demand a little bit of a higher you know per week average so i mean I, you gotta kind of you kind of gotta bite the bullet sometimes if you want those older players you know or those bench players not something too like i try to get you know players they're gonna be role players bench players you know substitute players Ooh. Morano Nall actually read that one right. Of course, he won't score off of this, will he? No. You know, that's why some players like Onal, who comes at a relatively high price, too, like I said, he might be worth trying to move just because of his value, his market value. And that market value should go up a little bit since we're going to go up a division. See that? How the fuck? What the fuck? Why, the why in the hell did they defend like that? What in the fuck? There's no one who ever defends a fucking set piece like that. I don't know how to fucking stop that. That is not the way they're fucking set up. They're not. There's no one set up in the in the free kick set piece to defend on the fucking post. Not a single fucking person. So why the fuck they go and do that is beyond me. Like I said, for whatever reason, the last few seasons I've been seeing that on this game. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Cause that's exactly what fucking happens. Guys are completely unmarked, so they just drop the ball right in there to him. And he can just do whatever the fuck he wants with it. I mean, because the fucking goalkeeper just stands in the line. Like he's really supposed to, actually. And what's up? Like this. Like, what the fuck? Now they're defending it the way they're set up to. I mean, what the fuck? I know, I mean, it's, it's like it. it's like the game just puts in a fucking free gimme for them. They never do that when we have set pieces. Ever. That has never fucking happened. Not once. Uh, sorry, that fucking irritates the shit out of me. Like, why the fuck does that happen? Because it's such an easy way for them to score. That's what is fucking irritating. Absolutely fucking bullshit. Hate that stuff so fucking much. Ugh. Uh, fucking hate that. I can't say that enough. I really can't. I mean, it's like just... What the hell? That's a fucking problem with their match engine. I know it's, yeah, he's in a box. Oh, wow, he scored. Holy shit. I thought, honestly, since we had that other fucking bullshit goal, they were going to get into it and then come back and find a way to draw it 2-2 or some stupid shit. And completely pissed me off. I mean, if they'd have scored a goal any other way, I mean, if they'd have scored a goal and, you know, it was a normal set piece like the other one that you saw right afterwards, all right, perfectly fine. No, 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 you know, yeah, sure, I'm a little pissed, but not nearly as pissed off as I am right now. Because, I mean, that's just, that's just complete bullshit. You can't defend that. I mean, they're set up to defend it a completely different way, but for whatever fucking reason, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't just happen because we're a, crappy fucking team you know and it and it's and, and it's not you know like i said it happens with you know my i've seen it happen with you know the other clubs that i've played with and those are good clubs and not that like yeah 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 like i said i just i fucking hate that so much it's just so fucking much it's so stupid I mean, before you're all like, oh, it's your tactics. <laughs> no, it's not my fucking tactics. I've defended set pieces like that. The free kicks like that the exact same way. And this is the way it's, they're set up to defend it. Thank you, Hightail. Holy shit. That's the way they're set up to defend it. That's the way everyone defends those. I mean, that's just the fucking way it is. You know, you man mark, or zonal mark, whatever you want to call it. But you don't put anyone on the fucking post. I have no one set up to stand on the post there. None. No one. The only time anyone should be standing on the post is a corner kick. That clearly was not a corner kick. I'm seriously going to rant about this until the end of this fucking episode. Seriously, that's how irritating it is. It's like, what in the hell am I supposed to do? You know, it's it's not like, you know, you can call timeout or anything and fucking get your shit together. Which, like I said, I mean, I've never seen it. In all my years of watching football, I've never seen that. Ever. And I've seen some pretty bad marking on set pieces. I mean, trust me, I'm a Liverpool fan. I know what bad marking on set pieces is like. Holy shit. 
can't defend those for the life of us, but they've never done that. I mean, good God. Anyhow. And the whole reason why that sucks ass so much is because, like, the guy that they passed it to, Ronco, on that whole thing where he was standing, he's on sides because of the guys in, on the post. That's the whole that's the whole reason why you don't put guys there. Is because it makes that guy on side and then Yeah, they just drop it in, which don't get me wrong, that was a nice little free kick to just drop it into him. I mean I'm I'll give you credit for doing that, for pulling that off. I mean that was perfect, but you know it, it, it makes that guy on side, which then yeah, there's no one who's gonna come up and mark him. No one who's man marking him anyway. Goalkeeper's on the line, he's just gonna sit there. You know. Anyway, at least we're gonna win this match for them, so the goal they get is a fucking Nah. That's all I'm gonna say. I didn't even fucking substitute anyone. We didn't get any cards, so I mean there really wasn't much reason to. And it's kinda of funny, yeah, I was talking about sending moving Morat and all along and here he is getting player of the match for us. Um the reason being though I, I do want to move him along is because he is uh he's more of a a straight striker, and he's not very pacey. Um, I mean, like I said, he wasn't bad today, but I mean, that, I don't know. Like I said, he's worth money too, so I'm thinking I'm gonna try and try and jump on that because I think that's really, really our best shot at having any room. Because I don't foresee us having much money. I don't foresee the board giving us much money when we join the next division. They might. I mean it. I mean, stranger things have happened, but I don't see them like, here, here's 5,000 euros to spend on transfers, and here's another 5,000 a week to spend on contracts, but, like I said, it could happen. Anyway, that does it for this episode. The next one will be the last and final one of the season. Then, like I said, I will plow through all the off-season shit, and like I said, hopefully I'll have some sort of some sort of loot bag in terms of players to show you. But anyhow, if you made it this far on YouTube, you know what to do. Thanks a lot for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. And remember, the ghost key is the only place where pants are optional.